Hello, welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler. Today we're going to talk about how you can count the possible outcomes you have in a certain scenario. So, an example you might get would read, a restaurant menu has a choice of three appetizers, three entrees, and two desserts. And then they would ask you, how many different meals or combinations of meals can you create if you have to choose one appetizer, one entree, and one dessert? So, I would say the more tedious way you can do this is you can create a diagram to represent your possible options. That would look something like this. You have your three appetizers. For each appetizer, you have three entrees. For each entree, you have two desserts. And then when you finish, you have all of these different outcomes here, which are the total number of meals you can create. Well, that might be OK for smaller numbered examples. Um, but when you start getting into bigger numbers, the diagram just blows up. It becomes huge. So what I recommend is using what's called the fundamental counting principle. What it basically says is, if you're looking at the total number of outcomes you can have for different categories, you can multiply the options you have for each category together, and then you'll end up with the total possible outcomes. So for this example, the fundamental counting principle would say, we can take our three appetizers times are three entrees times our two desserts, multiply them together, and we'll get our total possible meals. If you do that, three times three is nine, nine times two is 18. And if you were to actually count out how many desserts I have here, there's gonna be 18. So obviously this is a much, much quicker way to figure out the total possible outcomes you can have than just drawing a diagram. So let's try another example using our fundamental principle. Let's say you're picking an outfit to wear, um, and in your closet you're looking, you have five different shirts, you have four pairs of shorts, and you have three pairs of shoes. You want to figure out how many different outfits can I possibly put together. So yes, you could draw a diagram. I wouldn't recommend it. Let's use the fundamental counting principle. It says you take you know, five shirts, four shorts, three pairs of shoes. We can multiply those numbers together and we'll get our answer. So five times four times three. Five times four is 20. 20 times three is 60. So with only that short amount or low amount of clothing options, you can create 60 different outfits to wear. So. <clears throat> Let's take a look at another example that's similar, but a little bit different. This one, it says, <clears throat> you have a classroom of eight students, it's a really small class, and there's only four chairs for them, though. And you want to figure out how many different combinations of students can sit in the chairs. So this one's a little bit different because you're not creating outcomes based on different categories, so to speak. You're saying that there's a certain number of students and a certain number of chairs, and how many different ways can you sit those students in the chairs? Well, obviously not all eight students are going to fit in the four chairs. But what you want to do is you want to kind of figure that out um, in your mind, a diagram or an idea of what you're looking for. So let's say you have your four chairs. First thing you want to think is, how many students could possibly fit in this first chair? Well, there's eight different students that could sit there. Okay. What about the second chair? How many students that are left can sit in that second chair? Well, there's only seven students left because one of them is sitting in the first chair. What about that third chair? Well, now there's only six students. In that fourth chair, there's only five students. So now you know the number of students that could possibly sit in there. We can use the fundamental counting principle and multiply these numbers together. So if I do that, um, 8 times 7 is 56. 56 times 6 is going to be, what, 336. 336 times 5 is going to get me 1,680. And yes, I did cheat a little bit. I did that in advance. Um, so. There are 
1,680 ways you can put eight people or a group of eight people into only four chairs. That's a crazy number for such a small uh, scenario. But the key thing is when you get to these types of problems, you want to kind of figure out what you're looking at, kind of break it down into um, the different steps. So I hope this helps when you get to these kinds of problems and you're trying to figure out the different possible outcomes you can have. Good luck and thanks for joining. Your education will add up when you visit us at GEDS.com. For future tips and videos, be sure to subscribe and follow.